He's the person that we always go to when we have those tough autoimmune skin cases, and he always helps us. Uh, Dr. Slusevic. Thanks so much for that great introduction. So what we're going to try to do today is um, look at some dermatologic manifestations of rheumatologic disorders. I'm going to try to keep this uh, very practical and try to focus on the things that you're likely to see in practice and try to highlight some of the areas that tend to cause a lot of diagnostic confusion. Um, I don't really have any conflicts of interest. When we think about connective tissue disease that's autoimmune and required, you know, we think about the skin findings in sort of nonspecific or specific signs. So for instance, someone with scleroderma could have calcinosis cutis, but also someone with dermatomyositis. But we're going to focus on the big three, lupus, dermatomyositis, and scleroderma, and look at their typical presentations um, and approaches to treatment. There's some questions that we'll try to use the audience response and keep this interactive. It's going to be a lot of pictures, so it'll work a different part of your brain here. So let's begin with lupus. So when we think about systemic lupus, the prototypic sign that we think is sort of malar erythema, and it's pretty characteristic in the sense that it's central facial, and there's always usually this sharp margination here. So you can see here there's the nasal labial fold, and there tends to be this general relative sparing of that area, and you have less involvement of the forehead and sort of the philtrum area. This person has it a little bit more chronically, and you're starting to see some scale. Um, this is an example in patients of color, and you can see that sharp margination here, and you'll see in patients of color that the erythema is often significantly diminished. And especially in patients who are African American with chronic inflammation, they'll get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and get these deeply pigmented patches. But again, you see this uh, characteristic distribution. With chronic disease, these, these change. So rather than going to be flat, they become raised, and you can get plaque-like infiltration. And at this point, these types of lesions can become scarring. Um, so let's look at this question here. So I'm going to give you a couple questions here. So a 52-year-old male who presents with the following asymptomatic, asymptomatic facial eruption. He's used over-the-counter hydrocortisone, and he has a serology that reveals a negative ANA. So what is the most likely diagnosis? And so I guess you got, your thing has numbers, so you can just kind of use the numbers and let's just see what the spread is on this um, question. Okay, so it looks like most people are going with C, ANA negative systemic lupus, and then a couple people. So let's look at the answers here. So the point of this question 